Yeah, this is like the insider trading secret car, you know? It's the Nancy Pelosi edition. Dude, yeah. <laughs> like, if you know, you know. Get one while you can. Yeah. Patreon, the best website in the world. Patreon.com slash The Smoking Tire Podcast. You can get our podcast ad-free. You can ask our questions of our guests in a private uh, commenting and questioning environment. You can get the live stream and watch our podcast live, interact with us live on the air. You can get an ad-free listening experience. You can get the show the same day it's recorded and not have to wait till Tuesday, Thursday. And our new, ch- uh, you get an extra podcast every month at the Pro Driver tier. And our new championship tier, you get the Smoking Tire car review videos ad free as well. It is excellent. Patreon.com slash the Smoking Tire podcast. Good morning, folks. Welcome to a uh, very frigid day in the canyons. It's like 35 degrees outside. And today we're going to investigate. Uh, why Cy here hates horsepower and why he's a communist. Because this is a 2008 BMW 128i. So despite the 135i being for sale everywhere, he chose a 128. But there are several really good reasons he did this. I'm just trying to make fun of him. Cy, thank you so much for coming out and bringing your car. Really appreciate it. Um, So you hit me up after our giveaway car went up. That's right, yeah. We did a giveaway with an 08. 135i. And your email is great because you're like, well, look, I use this car as a track car, mm-hmm. as an autocross car. Like, right. you beat on this thing. Mm-hmm. And it's been dead reliable, according yeah. to you. And yeah. we'll get to that story in a second. And those of you who watched our giveaway build, you saw that we had to spend $10,000 doing just maintenance on the car. There are a lot of things that the 135i is just known to kind of eat and some of the some of them were just basic bushing things like those wear on a car and then other things were you know very specific engine stuff carbon buildup other things that are pretty complicated Mm -hmm. you bought this car two years ago two years ago yeah Mm -hmm. all right so tell us why'd you buy this over a 135 yeah and then what did you do to it um well i didn't want to deal with turbo stuff for one and it was out of budget they're like five grand more expensive at the time um, I was like, cool, my buddy's selling this car. I'm kind of in the market. I want to get back into autocross stuff, track stuff. And he goes, I got this car. I'm trying to get rid of it. I'm going to buy something else. And I said, cool, I want to buy that car. Luckily, he gave me kind of a discount on it. So it was sub $10,000 car, you know, real drive, manual. Right. And I was like, yeah, let's try it out. It turned out to be a great chassis just the way I bought it. You know, and that was two years ago, 10,000 miles ago. Slam boy, you know, but it... It's been a great car. I mean, I put some money and time into it now. So you I can just you turn put, laps. So you're a mechanic by trade, mm-hmm. uh, which helps a little bit with this cost structure. So what we, yeah. we estimated mm-hmm. this morning is you said you've put about, uh, was it 50 hours of work 50 in, hours, into yeah. like different mm-hmm. modifications? Mm-hmm. And at your rate, that's like, you know, $5,000. Yeah, give it um, And that's like the, the nice rate, the mm-hmm. discounted rate. Just so, labor, yeah, just labor. And But I mean, you drove it stock and it's worked really well. But mm-hmm. what, did, what did you do to it? You did a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a big list. Um, starting with suspension, it's got like M3 control arms from the E90 M3 because, you know, spherical bushings. It's got rear subframe inserts. I added a sway bar in the rear, stiffer one in the front, brake lines, pads, like Trek pads, rotors. I did forged wheels. Oh, oil cooler, diff, gear. Oh, the diff. Yeah. Let's talk about the diff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The diff was interesting. Yeah. You said it took you an hour, and then I realized you learned you were a mechanic after that. I went, yeah. oh, that's why it took Oh, I had a lift and everything. It was <laughs> and you have knowledge. Easy. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Why I didn't do my own diff. Um, but explain what the diff was. Like, it was a hodgepodge. It's a good little yeah. uh, turducken. So the, the diff I bought is from an E90. It's an automatic NA, right? It's got 373 gearing. So I just bought that car, or I bought that diff from eBay. And I bought the, you know, the, the, the limited slip differential from, I think it was ESC tuning or something. And I just made them together, slap bearings on it, new seals. And it's a direct bolt-in to this car. So do you took an LSD and then you put the 373s from the diff in that? Or no, vice versa? The, it already came with the 373s. Oh, okay. All I did was install the LSD into it. Got it. And it's super straightforward. Bearings come out, right? You press new bearings in. You put your LSD in. Seal it all up in the car and it's, it's four car. bolts that's amazing that's all it took and it way better gear ratio three it's like a 323 to a 373 now that's a huge jump I huge mean, jump this car yeah. has what 240 horsepower inline six Gear-tech, yeah mm-hmm. this was the last generation of uh naturally aspirated yeah. aspirated mm-hmm. it's so cold my mouth doesn't work 
the last generation of naturally aspirated inline sixes BMW yeah. sold was this 128. Mm -hmm. But you know, for you, 240 horsepower. These these engines, even when in NA form, have like a strong torque to them, like a really good Absolutely, mid range. Yeah. They're really smooth. Mm -hmm. But to go make that jump in the diff, I bet the acceleration changed hugely because I think oh, 060 huge. was like yeah. five seven in stock form, and I'm yeah. sure you shaved a second. I'm sure. Yeah, I can pass in sixth gear now. You know, I just. I mean, it, it, it's only like a 500 RPM difference mm -hmm. from highway speeds, which is not terrible, but you can feel it when you're accelerating for sure, you know? It's a power band difference. Golf ball shifter. Mm -hmm. I first used one of these in a GTI. It was really popular in the VW community. Um, you said it was on the E30 touring cars. Was oh, that is the shortest of shifters. Yes, that's a oh uh, Denon super short shifter. That? It feels good when you're driving. That's like half but, an inch. Mm -hmm. I thought, it, I was like, that can't be first gear. Oh my God. Yeah. Standard H pattern, reverses <laughs> you, up you to the right. You <laughs> didn't change it. <laughs> no, I didn't change that. You gotta change it to a W to, to fuck with people. Is it still in, do you turn the H sideways? That is so short, I feel like I'm not in gear. <laughs> yeah. Great bearings, it's, it's you know. Still hydraulic, it is still hydraulic steering, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. what, what coilovers are on this? What actual? These are the the Bilstein like PS. Are they the B16s, B08s, or something like that? They're just the ride height adjustable. Oh, okay. So you Stock didn't go. Replacement. You didn't go super stiff or aggressive no, on the coils. No. So what you've done is stiffen the entire chassis as much as possible, mm -hmm. and then kept it compliant. Upgraded the brakes. Like <laughs> you, you have upgraded your car in a very smart way, which is just Test everything first. went up a, like the same amount. Mm -hmm. Very wise, very stock wise. Stock power. That's what a professional does, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, stock power. All right, so here's what I feel. Turn-in is nice, but not crazy aggressive. Like, there's no twitching happening on the wheel right now. But as soon as you get, like, like five degrees in on the steering wheel, it, it just wants to lean into the corner. All right, engine very quiet. I noticed in the back you have an exhaust dump on this car. Which yeah. is really funny. Tell that story. Because I looked at it I was like, there's no turbo. This isn't like a, a super duty. We're not rolling coal in this thing. Uh, so wh why do you have the dump? I just wanted the car to be a little bit louder. I had originally taken the cats out and I had to smog it recently. And they're like, yo, you need to put these back. So I put them back. It saw the dump. It was a little louder with them, you know, without the cats on there. But it's still loud enough so that you can still, you know, get into the power band. And it's vacuum actuated, so it, it comes on at like 4,000. Nice. So I can be on the freeway, 2,000 RPM, totally quiet. I mean, you can tell it's really quiet. I mean, it's so quiet. Right yeah. now we're at 4,500 RPM, yeah. and it is far from loud. I mean, it, it's honestly, like my car feels yeah. like it's about this loud. Mm -hmm. So this seems stock. So if it was quieter than this, I could see why you'd want a little more, especially yeah. if you're on the track, you're going fast, windows yeah. down, you mm -hmm. can't really hear the car. Shifter is so short. Wow. You know, we're at 4,000 feet. Like, it doesn't pull that hard. Your brakes are great. Yeah. Brakes are great. HP Plus. And it's the... in stock rotors, stock uh, calipers, mm -hmm. but lines, fluid, yep. pads. Mm -hmm. Man. All the essential stuff for track duty. So random. Tracker, Front loader? Yeah, what is yeah it? whatever that thing is. But this car will just turn laps all day. You know, I drive it to the track, turn laps for five seasons or you know five sessions, and then drive it home. And you've owned this car two years. You two said years. you've done like dozens of autocross days, mm -hmm. which you know those can be hard on a car in a different way because you're doing a lot of hard acceleration, and hard braking, a lot first of and second stuff, gear. Yeah. yeah, a lot of like really precise stuff. Whereas you know, a big willow or button willow or something, it's got more flow to it and you may not be spending as much time high in the rev range, but right. there's a lot more force being put on the car because of the speed and the G-forces on a turn. So how is the engine held up to, you know, these numerous track days? Dude, this, this engine is super reliable, you know? It's bit, like I said, it's been 10,000 miles of just track duty and, you know, just hard miles. But the engine hasn't leaked any. I haven't had any coolant problems yet. 
um, it's just been reliable, you know, and it lives at like six, seven grand. Yeah, with these shorter gears, I mean, the car is so quiet, and I'm, I'm cornering right now at 5,000 RPM, mm -hmm. and it sounds like I'm at 3,000 RPM. It's so quiet. Yeah, this, this chassis makes it really easy to, you know, just kind of throw it around. Yeah. It's almost like, a, I would say kind of boring, kind of dulled, you know, because it masks the speed so well. Definitely. I feel like I'm in a more luxurious BRZ. That's okay. that's really yeah. what it feels like to me in terms of, you know, this car is like 3,200 pounds, so it's a little bit heavier Heavy, yeah. than a BRZ. Um, but it's 200 pounds lighter than a 135i. And, you know, you're pulling most of that weight off of the nose. And it just feels really, yeah. like, even. Uh but yeah, because because you set it up so well, yeah. and yet it's still soft enough, it just kind of like mutes the outside world mm -hmm. <clears throat> and lets us move through it much more quickly than a stock 128i yeah. would. It's dude, your car is like really clean. I mean, the interior on this with like there's a few you know exceptions around yeah, the, the MMI controller because yeah. that's where people's hands mm -hmm. were landing a lot. But the seats are really clean. This is and how many miles are on this? 127,000 miles. Mm -hmm. I mean, you went through it. And there, so, of course, there's no squeaks, there's no rattles, like the bushings yeah. feel fresh. The car just feels fresh, and it's like they made a 128iS or something like that. Yeah, I like that. Thank you. It looks like what a it's amazing the M3 control arms fit so perfectly, mm -hmm. and they're from an E90. And yeah. it, you know, you, you kind of have the tires and wheels pushed out to the very edge, but it looks like you're rubbing only in the back a little bit, nothing in the front. Nothing in the front, just full compression in the rear. If you look at the fenders, they're a little crunchy because of it, and they've been pulled and rolled, but okay. this is as much as I can do, yeah. unless I got more camber. I mean, the body can only be so big, and you just yeah. keep shoving, like, you know, yeah. bigger and bigger arms in it, you're going to tear that t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. All right, so so the 135i's were five grand more, but you also said you own a 235i, right? That's right, yeah. So did you have that car before this or after this? Uh, after. All right. Yeah. So this did this give you the bug of the mm. BMW bug, or did you already have it? And you just wanted horsepower after this? You know, I just wanted a comfortable daily. I came from a TDI sedan, which is, I love that car. It was a great car. But I actually, our buddies were going to do a daily battle at Autocross. And I was like, well, now's a good time to get rid of my daily <laughs> and buy <laughs> the car that I really want. That you is know? cheating. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of what pushed me into it. And I said, one day I'm going to get rid of this car, but I'm still going to have that car. So... I'm not really trading anything up for anything else, you know? <laughs> hey, we're doing a daily battle. I actually just remembered I'm going to sell my, my uh, TDI tomorrow, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and I'm picking up a Ferrari F430 Scud. But yeah, yeah. then I'll, I'm down for the weekend daily battle. Absolutely. That sounds like a good one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know what? I was on the fence. I was like, ah, it's a great daily. And then they were like, oh, we're doing daily battle. I was like, okay. Like, okay. Well, that just made my choice for me. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to show up with a TDI. You'll bring the snacks. And yeah. Show up in last place. Yeah. These guys are competitive. I was trying to have some fun, you know. This would be such a fun. I mean, what you use it for is perfect. Like, you drive it to the track comfortably, and it's quiet. Then you get to the track, and it's this is the right amount of aggressive, the right amount of agile. The grip is great. You got really sticky. What are they? Uh, Falcon Azenis on it. Yeah, the RT 660s. You got sidewall. Thank you for keeping sidewall yeah. alive. We're all trying to bring it back. Yeah, still a comfortable ride, you know, even yeah. on the freeway. I mean, this is a, this is you could daily this no problem, mm -hmm. and you could drive it to the track and, and run run all those days. And the fact it's holding up well is awesome because the 135i, which is so fun and so fast, whether it's stock or modified, like it is a special car that I love. But you know, you it's a more complicated engine. And it's, it's pushing boost, and the engines are known to have problems. N54 or N55. The 54 has even more problems. So you're just, like, if you're out there and you're looking for an everything car and you don't want to buy something new, you know, we've talked before, like, you could get a Camaro, you could get a Mustang GT, BRZs, but, like, BRZs have engine issues as well. Your friend who came up with you, yeah, he's blown three Subaru engines. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I feel like this is an answer that like younger enthusiasts might overlook they were really popular yeah. with journalists yeah. when they came out because it's like it's this do everything car that yeah. kind of goes back to BMW's tradition and yeah people if you're overlooking these I mean this is awesome like this is yeah. one of those things like if you know you know 
Exactly. It's like, oh yeah, yeah I, I love my car. And, and if someone drove this, the same thing that happened with Miatas, where people would shit on Miatas and call them a hairdresser's car or whatever. Yeah. And then if you drive it, you go, it's, Upsold, actually, yeah. it's actually really mm-hmm. fun. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't tell my dad, but I actually really like driving your Miata. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a joke amongst my friends that I'm going to put a B58 in this thing. You know, like the super engine? Yep. It's like this, it would call it'd be called the B five eighty two. You should. You know? You should. <laughs> like it's a super engine, so everyone goes, so it's a BMW engine. It's like, <laughs> ah no, but it's from a Supra. Yeah. I would have been uh, broke if I had to pay for labor for this thing every time I needed something. I think with anything really. Yeah. Yeah, and it's you know, these cars are a pain in the butt all the time. Like all the time. So it's, if you if you can afford it and you just would rather have a mechanic have a headache that day, then do that, you know? <laughs> but, yes, yeah, sometimes you're like, something goes awry, and you're like, dang it. Are there any cars that are not a pain in the ass? Not anymore. How many different OEMs have you worked for as a tech? Uh, just just Mopar. Just Mopar? Yeah. Okay. Five car makes, and I guarantee you, all of them, they're a pain in the butt to work on now. Wow. All modern cars are headaches, for sure. Yeah, especially with like the new the new stuff that has the screens here, even in the pockets, or like the screens that come back from the you know for the passengers for the new BMW stuff, like that would be super difficult to work on too without breaking anything. You Dude, know? have you seen the new Mercedes that have little screens on the steering wheel and you? Oh yeah, there's your like you turn these knobs and you press these buttons to adjust things on like the high dollar AMGs. Yeah, that's but crazy. You, I mean, you're looking at a a computer screen that is literally literally the size of a half dollar. I know. And like. In 10 years, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm curious. I'd hate to be the guy working on that car. How do you, yeah, you, know? you got these little tiny dentist tools. It's not going to be fun. You know? Well, what do you, do you have any plans for this? Any uh, um, changes in the future? You're just going to drive the shit out of it. I don't know. I'm at crossroads right now. I don't know if I want to move on to something else or make it a full track daddy car. You know, seats, rear cage, harnesses. I don't know if I want to go that route yet, but mm-hmm. I'm at crossroads. I'm like, mm, I could do this or I could do that. Everything costs money. So, yes. I'm like, mm, maybe I'll hold on. But it is enjoyable now, you know. I can enjoy it the way it is, drive it, stuff on in it. I mean, a seat would do a lot for a track day. Yeah. It would, yes, that would really absolutely, help. Absolutely. You could, oh, man, we're getting, like, <laughs> we're getting swarmed by heavy equipment. Um, that would do a lot. But I, I get it. You've had it for a couple years. You've kind of done the things with it. Yeah. So, I don't know. Whatever you do next, I'm sure, will be thought out and work really well. So, dude, thank you so much for bringing it up here on this frigid day. I exactly. appreciate it. I appreciate that. Well, guys, I hope this is a little education that you don't always need all the horsepower. You don't always need the turbo, especially if you want to get into track driving, autocross. A simpler engine is just going to be more reliable. It's going to cost you less to maintain because there are fewer parts. It's probably going to put less stress on the drivetrain and on all the other parts of the car, so those will last longer as well. And ultimately, it's going to be a better education in driving. If the car is not going all the speed at once if you can get used to cornering and braking because everything's literally happening happening at a lower speed and that's a better education and uh we might all be sleeping on the 128i everyone's buying 350z's right now for twelve thousand dollars you might go back to bmw for uh, drift missiles i don't know everything's expensive it sucks (laughs) anyway thank you guys for watching we will see you next time and remember Always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com TST.